level, and then Zach will talk about all the incredibly cool stuff that he contributed in the last year or so uh, uh, about um, IntelliSense and e everything in the code editor that, that makes editing Julia code uh, smooth. Um, we just published a new uh, version uh, yesterday, so that only works on uh, uh, 0.6, and I'm using the published version yesterday, so it's on the marketplace and you, you can download it there. So we're not going to show everything, I'm just going to show a couple of, of features here. So the first thing is, uh, you get syntax highlighting, of course, and then we have an integrated REPL uh, for Julia in VS Code. Uh, so I can hit Control Enter, and that will actually send the current line of code to the uh, uh, Julia REPL. Uh, I can do the same. Uh, uh, the, the REPL that you have in here is actually just the Julia REPL. It's not a different UI. So f things like, for example, REPL modes and so on all work uh, uh, inside this uh, REPL. Um, <coughs> Uh, let's uh, 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 send this command here to the REPL by uh, clicking Control Enter again. So that's a plot command. Uh, so we now have an integrated plot pane uh, uh, in, in Julia VS Code. So um, that shows uh, the plot inside this plot pane. Um, I'll plot one more thing here, uh, another uh, plot command, uh, and that ends up here. And then you can flip through the different plots with the arrow keys. You can delete individual plots. Um, uh, and so on. So that should work with most plotting packages. If the plotting packages uh, uh, plug into the uh, normal uh, Julia multimedia API, then they show up. And I tested a, a large number of them, and most of them worked out of the box. So we got a uh, plotting pane. Uh, that's sort of a, a recent new thing. Uh, one thing we also have is uh, support um, for Weave documents, uh, Julia Markdown documents. So if you're an R user and know about Knitter, uh, this is sort of the Julia equivalent uh, of that. Um, so what you have there is uh, Julia Markdown, and then inside the Julia Markdown, you have code blocks uh, that can run, and, can, uh, uh, and then you can weave the Markdown and the results of these code runs into an output document. Uh, the extension supports things like uh, saving it into lots of different file formats, a PDF, and so on. Uh, and, but you can also uh, say Julia Open Preview, and it will take your Weave document and weave it into a preview here in the editor. Now, that currently is relatively slow. We have plans to uh, improve the performance of that, so we'll have to wait a little bit until that's finished. Um, one cool thing about the whole Weave thing is that all the IntelliSense and code editing features that Zach will uh, demonstrate to you later work in code blocks in Weave documents. Okay, So uh, you actually get all the uh, documentation help uh, functionality and so on inside these uh, documents. Um, and while we wait, I, I just want to highlight one other thing about uh, deployment uh, um, of, of this extension. So you download it from the marketplace, uh, uh, the VS Code marketplace. And we actually bring all the packages, the Julia packages that we re rely on, with ourselves, and we store them outside of the Julia package uh, directory. So uh, we don't install anything into your Julia package uh, directory. And if, you, if your Julia package directory is completely messed up, we don't even see it. Uh, so that has really helped us um, to, uh, to get to a more uh, robust deployment uh, story that we don't uh, rely on, on the user package. OK, so here uh, we weave that. Uh, a particular document into an HTML view here, and you can see the plot uh, uh, and, and so on. OK, and with that, I'll turn it over to Zach to talk about the cool th stuff. OK, hi. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually look through some of our code and show you what we provide in terms of features, help, and everything like that. So this is the language server, which runs the VS Code extension, but it can also be used by any other, well, not any other, by many other text editors, such as NeoVim, Vim, I think, and Eclipse. But there has to be a client-side bit written in. So here's some random file with some function that does stuff. Uh, the first thing we can do is that we have hovers. So if you put the cursor over a function or over anything, it should pop up with some information. You should have started the extension earlier because now it's actually OK. In that case, I'll go back to your, to your one. Sorry. So if we type in the name of anything from base, for example, 
Rand? You need to save it as a junior file. Oh, God, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so here, we'll get the, the documentation that comes from the REPL. So it's the same sort of thing you'd get if you were to just do a question mark and then type the word in. And it displays it all in Markdown, which is sort of nice. Um, um, if there's no documentation available for it, we try to run some sort of inference. So here I've defined some things in our code. And then further on, I want to know what integer literal is. And we know that it's an int, which is also useful. If we can't work out what it is, we'll just show you the expression that defines it. Um, as well as this, we have auto-completions. So you start typing. For example, we want to hit rand. And you'll get all the completions that you would in the REPL, as well as documentation if you want there. Uh, this also works for variables that you d define. So here I've just got something that's an integer. And later on in my code, I want to find it, and it pops up. This won't work beforehand. That's just a completion provided by the, the VS Code, not on our side. And that shouldn't appear in later versions. Um, as well as this, we have signature completions. So if you start typing a method for a function, and then as soon as you hit open brackets, it'll help you fill in by telling you what the arguments are for it. And as you type along, it should highlight the next argument to be filled in. Uh, this also works for things in base. And it will provide you a list of all of the methods that are available. Um, hopefully, our other things should be up now. OK. so. Here we've got our file, and this is part of a whole package. And what it does, when we start up, we pass the whole package or the whole project. So each document should know what each token in it refers to. So here we've got range. This is not range from base. This is something specific to this package. And if we click on it, oh, sorry, that does not work. Um, if we click on these, they should take us to where they're defined. But I'm afraid that's not working. <laughs> um, another way to find symbols is you can get a workspace symbol view, which is just a list that shows everything that's been defined in any of the files. And then you can skip to that part easily. So here, we've got a struct that's been defined, and we can go there. And you can also do that on a per file basis. Um, another feature that works a little bit at the moment, but will be improved in future versions, is you can find all references to a symbol or a token. And that's different from a normal search function in that it only refers to the symbols that, um, sorry, the symbols that actually refer to the same object, not have the same name. So here, if I do this and do find all references, sorry, that's not actually used. We should get all of, oops. Sorry. Sorry, that's not quite working. Um, I'm afraid I'm going to have to wrap things up. Uh, are there any questions about it? Sorry. So these are linting errors, and they should, these ones probably refer to, uh, it says we're using an undeclared variable, but that shouldn't be the case. I think it's because we just pulled a clone of this off GitHub and it's not been set up properly. Yes? Sorry, could you re repeat that? Is 
So is there a difference between uh, searching for methods in base or user-defined code? Um, yeah, so if it's in base or another package, we'll just get the line number, whereas if it's in our, your code, you'll get sort of exact code position on it. But otherwise, as long as it's included in your code, you should be able to find the method. It, sh it should do if it's included in your standard package directory and you've, and you've included it in the file that you're working with. Anyone? Yes? So you mentioned that you want to disable the dictionary you're working from uh, for completions? Disable the... Yeah, the, yeah, the completion that was based simply on the words that appear in the document. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, that's just something built into the editor. It just selects any word that's been typed and appears. I actually like that, so if you turn that off. Well, I, I'm not sure if we can turn it off. It's just for an example of sh it showing that we're only providing variables that are actually defined at that point in the code. It wasn't very helpful, sorry. OK, well, maybe we won't. <laughs> Back. Um, we don't have as many features. Uh, we don't. We don't. Uh, the disadvantages. Uh, we don't have as good evaluation support. So eval in module and things like that. On the other hand, um, everything we do is static analysis. So nothing is run. So if you've got a large project and you accidentally hit run and it's going to take an hour. That's, that's not a problem here. And all our linting, again, will, is and will be static analysis. And I, I, I guess, you know, this is not a, nothing about Juno, but I, I, to, I, I, VS Code is really, f I, f you know, so you get the VS Code editor, which at least I found more pleasant um, because it's faster in my experience than, than Atom. <coughs> So the question is whether they're Emacs key mac, uh, keyboard bindings, and I have no idea. Do you know? Um, I'm not sure what they are. Sorry. I, you'd have to look in the VS Code marketplace, and I, I, there might be packages that have that or not. I, I just don't know. Yeah. I, I just don't know. <laughs>